Hey guys, Lotus Tech here back again with another video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to use and install RetroArch and set it all up. So in this video, we'll be just setting it up. So what you wanna do is you wanna go onto the album and what you wanna do is you wanna go into the Homebrew App Store. Now on the Homebrew App Store, you wanna wait for it to load and then once it's done loading, you wanna go onto search and then we wanna type Retro and it should pop up. There we go, RetroArch. So for you, you're gonna get an option saying download, but for me, I'm gonna get an option saying update because I already have it, so I'm gonna update it and you guys should download it. So once it's done, I'll get back to you and show you what to do from there. So once it's done, you basically have RetroArch installed, but we're gonna do some things to make it look better and just feel better when using it. So over here, I'm gonna launch RetroArch right now. So we're gonna wait for this to load. And now this is a common error. If you get this, it's because you haven't loaded a game. And this is what happens also for Melon DS users whenever they load a game. So we're gonna reload back into the Nintendo Switch software and I'm gonna show you what to do from there. Now a few things are that you want to have some like way to get your games in. So for me, you can create a folder on your Nintendo Switch full of your ROMs and stuff. I won't be showing you how to do that in this video but there are a bunch of guides that show that too but and i'll be making a guide soon on how to play your nintendo 64 games play all those games on your nintendo switch so once you have installed it fully what you want to do is you want to open a game and you want to press this r button right here so we're going to open a minecraft for example we're just going to hold down r and then it should bring up this homebrew menu and now we're just going to launch retro arc Once we're on RetroArch, you see that my menu looks like this, but you won't get this menu. This is the X and B menu. So in order to get this, what you want to do is you want to go on to settings. When you're on settings, what you want to do is you want to go on to configuration. So where's configuration? And then you want to make sure your settings are like this. And then we want to go on to user interface, then X and B. So over here, Ozone looks something different, but I have X and B on, and once you have that there, you just want to restart RetroArch. We're going to go over here, and I'm going to look for Restart RetroArch, and there you go. Every time you install system-wide software changes, you just want to restart system, and it'll work better. So over here, if we go on Load Core, you can see we have a bunch of cores right here. I will also be making a video soon on how to use 3DS on this. So there's a bunch of things you can do on this. For example, if we go on to Game Boy, if I load 3DS, I can play my 3DS games on here. And if I go on load content, and then I go on file browser, let's see. As you can see, I have my 3DS games here, and I can just launch up Mario Kart 7, and it should work. So I'm gonna wait for this to work. And there we go, we got Mario Kart 7 working on this. I'll be making a video soon on how to load your core in so you can play these games and everything. So yeah, there are other games you can play too on here. You can basically play a bunch of old Nintendo games on here. So yeah, I hope that this video did help on showing how to install it. Um, to get your cores, you just go on the website and they have cores there and there's also other cores throughout the whole thing. But yeah, it's basically how to install and the basic setup of RetroArch. I hope that this video helped and yeah.